In example 8, we are designing a shear reinforcement for a reinforced concrete beam. In this example, we are given a cantilever beam of 2.2 meter long and it is subject to, to a factor load of 44 kilonewton meter. It is a factor load that means the load combinations and the load co factors has already been taken into account. And the section of the beam is given in the figure here again. Um, it, it has three N20 longitudinal reinforcement bars in tension to take the flexure a moment. And uh, the width is 300 millimeter. And the overall height of the beam is 350 millimeter. The concrete strength is 32 megapascal. And for the given exposure condition, the clear cover required is 20 millimeter. So for this beam, we have to design a shear reinforcement. So let's first draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram to find out what would be the maximum shear force that we have to design the reinforcement for. Now if we draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram, it will look like this one. So it has the uniformly distributed load on a cantilever, 44 kilonewton per meter. So the shear force at the maximum is at the support, that is 96.8 kilonewton, which is um, V star equals to W star multiplied by L. W star is 44 and the length is 2.2 meter. So that will give us the maximum shear force as 96.8 kilonewton. Similarly, the bending moment, the maximum bending moment at the support is 106.5 kilonewton meter. And again, M star at the support can be for the cantilever beam is W star L square by 2. And if you apply this, the maximum bending moment is 106.5 at the support. Now, for this question, we are concerned with the shear force. So we'll first look into the maximum shear force that is on the beam, which is 96.8 kilonewton. The cross-section of the beam is as shown here. The overall depth of the beam is 350 millimeter and the clear cover that is required is 20 millimeter. Therefore, the effective cover D is overall depth of the beam 350 millimeter minus the half of the um, diameter of the bar that is 20 millimeter bar minus the clear cover so that gives us the effective depth of the beam as 320 millimeter as noted here with this we can proceed to design shear reinforcement for this beam we have to design a shear design for v star equals to 96.8 kilonewton that is our maximum shear force in the beam now before we do that we need to find out what is the shear shear strength contribution from the concrete section alone and whether that is enough to take the shear force or not so the shear contribution from the concrete so from the concrete section alone vuc is given by kv tv bv and whatever fc does and this is in class here dv is greater of value of 0.72d or 0.9 effective depth d so this is given in clause now 0.72d is 0.72 and 350 or 0 0.9 and small d is 320 millimeter that gives us our dv effective shear depth as 288 millimeter and for a rectangular beam bv is the width of the beam itself and that is 300 millimeter and assuming that the stirrups are required to be provided and the area of stirrups required is greater than the minimum amount of stirrups required And we are assuming that ASV divided by S is greater than or equal to ASV dot mean. We'll check this one later. And it is given in clause. Now, using the simplified method uh, for this condition, we can write down KV is 0 0.15. So, using the simplified method given in clause 8.2.4.3, where ASV over S is greater than or equal to SV mean over S we can take KV as 0 0.15. So we know all the parameters now. That is a VUC, the shear contribution from the concrete section itself is KV, which is 0 0.15. BV is 300. 
dv is 288 and root over fc dash and fc dash is 32 megapascal here so this is in newton so this comes out to be 73.31 kilo newton now to get the design shear capacity of the concrete section itself we have to multiply by phi and phi for the shear is 0.7 and that gives us where phi is equal to 0 0.7 from table 2.2.2 so this is the design shear capacity of the concrete, concrete section alone Now we have to check whether we need any shear reinforcements or not. If half of this shear capacity contributed by the concrete is greater than V star, we do not need any shear reinforcement. So let's check whether we need any shear reinforcement or not. So we compute what is 0.55 VUC. And we know that it is less than V star, so V star is 96.8 kN, that is the maximum shear force in the beam, that means shear reinforcement is required. Now the next step is to check whether minimum shear reinforcement would be enough. So let's check whether minimum shear reinforcement would be enough to take the shear force. So for that we have to calculate what is the minimum shear reinforcement for the given section. This is given by this equation. Given in clause. So this comes out to be 0 0.272. Now to compute the shear capacity with the minimum shear reinforcement. So the total shear capacity of the beam with minimum shear reinforcement is given as VU dot mean is the contribution from the concrete section plus the contribution from the minimum amount of shear reinforcement let's denote it as vus dot min vuc we already have calculated as 73.31 kilonewton so let's keep it as a newton So this is coming for the vertical stirrups. So we know that 73.31 ASB mean over S is we computed 272. Cot theta V is 1.38. Now for the simplified method, as we discussed earlier, uh, theta V can be taken as 36 degrees. So if we put back theta V is 36 degrees, cot theta V is 1.38. So this is in Newton, all of this in Newton. So this will come out to be 1.38. this is the capacity of the reinforced concrete beam with minimum amount of shear reinforcement. Therefore, the design capacity is 5VU dot min, which will come out to be 89.15 kilonewton.
So that is the capacity, design capacity of the beam with minimum amount of shear reinforcement. And as we can see here, V star the shear force is still greater than phi V u dot min. That means the minimum amount of shear reinforcement is not sufficient to take the given maximum shear force. Therefore, we need to design the shear reinforcement. The minimum amount of shear reinforcement is not adequate. So design But before we do that, we need to check for maximum allowable shear force for the given cross-section. So the maximum allowable shear force for the given cross-section VU max is given by class 8.2.3.3 as 0 0.55. So this will come out to again TW is 36 degree for a simplified method. And the maximum shear force allowed for this given cross section comes out to be. 722.52 kilonewton. Therefore, the maximum design shear force allowed in the beam is greater than is greater than V star. That means the section dimension doesn't need to be changed. If 5 VU max was coming less than V star, that means the section is carrying more shear force than allowable shear force, and web crushing can occur, then you have to change the cross section. But in this case, your V star, the maximum shear force is less than the maximum allowable shear force in the beam so we don't have to change the cross section so the section size is okay so we are happy with that therefore v star is greater than phi v u mean that means the shear reinforcement has to be designed and the minimum shear reinforcement is not adequate and it is but the V star is less than 5 VU max, that means uh, it is still less than the maximum allowable shear force, so we do not have to change the cross section. So this is where we are. Now, to find out how much shear reinforcement is required to take the shear force, we need to find VUS to take the extra shear force. So the shear force that needs to be taken by the stirrups is given by the total design capacity required minus the shear force taken by the concrete that is VUC. VU we know we can get it by maximum shear force divided by the um, strain reduction factor and VUC is the concrete contribution. So V star we already know as 96.8 kilonewton divided by 0 0.7 as phi and VUC we computed as 73.31 so that gives us VUS as 60.98 kilonewton. So this is the shear force that has to be taken by the stirrups. So we need to design the stirrups to take this extra shear force. So we need to find the area and the spacing of the shear reinforcement required. So VUS we know for a vertical stirrup is given by So this is for the vertical stirrups. Now from uh, table 10.7.4.3, it gives us the minimum diameter of stirrups required for the given longitudinal reinforcement. So if you look into my lecture video for shear design, we know that for 20 millimeter longitudinal bar,
minimum stirrups diameter required is 6 mm stirrups is required. Therefore, we are using two leg 6 mm stirrups. So, using two leg 6 mm stirrups, the area of cross section of the shear reinforcement is two leg and the diameter of each stirrup is 6 mm. So, that gives us the area of shear reinforcement as 56.55 mm square. Now, if we plug the area of shear reinforcement back into this equation, we can find what is the spacing required. So, plugging area of steel back into the here to find what is the spacing required here. So, S from the equation above can be found on area of reinforcement, ASB. Multiplied by F is Y dot F. TV divided by V US into cot theta V. So plugging the values in here, ASV is 56.55, 500, 288, and VUS is 64.98 into 1000 for putting it in Newton, and cot theta V is 1.38. Now we get this one as this comes out to be 172. 9 millimeter so rounding it down therefore provide two leg six millimeter stirrups at center to center distance of 170 millimeter we are rounding down the stirrups so this 170 millimeter spacing we can provide the stirrups Now the final thing we have to do is to check whether our spacing between the stirrups is within the maximum allowable spacing. So S max the maximum allowable spacing should be smaller of 0.5D or 300mm. So 0.5 D here it gives 0.5 into 350 millimeter would be the smaller one here. It is 175 millimeter. Therefore, the spacing provided is 170 millimeter, which is less than S max. So that means our spacing is okay. Therefore, we can provide two leg six millimeter stirrups at center to center spacing of. Now the final thing that is required is the drawing of the shear reinforcement. So the drawing can be provided like this. And as you can see here, the, the red lines denote the longitudinal reinforcement in the tension. As you can see, we, can also, we have also provided a longitudinal reinforcement in compression as well. This can be a small diameter bars like N10 or N12 bar just to hold the stirrups only. It is not taken into account while calculating the moment capacity of the beam. So the reinforcement intention is 3N20 bars and we are providing the stirrups, the uh, two leg 6 millimeter stirrups and the horizontal distance, longitudinal distance between the stirrups is 170 center to center. So we are providing the stirrup throughout the beam at 170 millimeters center to center.